Hallelujah and blessings, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus, the Christ, is King of kings and Lord of lords. And together the people of God say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is June the 30th in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we're continuing our study in the book of First Enoch, and today we're going to begin in chapter 64. Now, there's not much commentary needed on this because of the fact that it will pretty much explain itself. So I will invite you to read along with us. I have placed the link in the description where you can do so. And so let's begin at verse 1 of chapter 64, which is only two verses, and then beginning in chapter 65, we're going to read the words of Noah. Some say that Noah actually wrote this portion of First Enoch. And the key thing to keep in mind here is that Noah is looking to Enoch as a great prophet. And so although Enoch is the great-grandfather of Noah, Noah looks to Enoch for revelation, for wisdom, and for knowledge. So let's begin in chapter 64, verse 1. And other forms I saw hidden in that place. I heard the voice of the angel saying... These are the angels who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men and seduced the children of men into committing sin. Now, we've talked about this in previous videos, so I will not elaborate on that at this time. Chapter 65. In those days, Noah saw the earth, that it had sunk down and its destruction was nigh. And he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth and cried aloud to his grandfather Enoch. And Noah said three times with an embittered voice, Hear me, hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, Tell me what is that falling out on the earth, that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken, lest perchance I shall perish with it. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth, and a voice was heard from heaven, and I fell on my face. And Enoch, my grandfather, came and stood by me. And said unto me, Why hast thou cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping? And a command has gone forth from the presence of the Lord concerning those who dwell on the earth, that their ruin is accomplished because they have learnt all the secrets of the angels, and all the violence of the Satans, and all their powers, the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, and the power of witchcraft and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth, and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth, and how soft metals originate in the earth. For lead and tin are not produced from the earth like the first. It is a fountain that produces them, and an angel stands therein, and that angel is preeminent. And after that, my grandfather Enoch took hold of me by my hand and raised me up and said unto me, Go, for I have asked the Lord of spirits as touching this commotion on the earth. And he said unto me, Because of their unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon and shall not be withheld by me forever. Because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learnt, that would be from these fallen angels. The earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed. And these, they have no place of repentance forever, because they have shown them what was hidden, and they are the damned. But as for thee, my son, the Lord of spirits knows that thou art pure and guiltless of this reproach concerning the secrets. Now, it's important to point out here, and we talked about this in a previous video as well, when the Bible says that Noah was pure, it seems to be talking about his seed. He was genetically pure. He had not been corrupted by these fallen angels who had sex with these women of earth. And we know that because in the next few verses, it says, He is destined thy name to be among the holy, and he will preserve thee amongst those who dwell on the earth. And he has destined thy righteous seed. You see, the righteous seed is pointed out. Again, meaning genetically pure. He has destined thy righteous seed both for kingship and for great honors. And from thy seed shall proceed a fountain of the righteous and holy without number forever. 
chapter 66. And after that, he showed me the angels of punishment who are prepared to come and let loose all the powers of the waters which are beneath in the earth in order to bring judgment and destruction on all who abide and dwell on the earth. This would seem to be alluding to the flood. And the Lord of Spirits gave commandment to the angels who were going forth, that they should not cause the waters to rise, but should hold them in check. For those angels were over the powers of the waters. And I went away from the presence of Enoch. Chapter 67. And in those days the word of God came unto me. And he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me, a lot without blame, a lot of love and uprightness. And now the angels are making a wooden structure. And when they have completed that task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. And there shall come forth from it the seed of life. And a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant. Now it would seem in this passage that the angels helped Noah build the ark. That's interesting. He continues in verse 3, And I will make fast thy seed before me forever and ever, and I will spread abroad those who dwell with thee. It shall not be unfruitful on the face of the earth, but it shall be blessed and multiply on the earth in the name of the Lord. And he will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley which my father Enoch had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin. And I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of the waters. And when all this took place from that fiery molten metal and from the convulsion thereof in that place, there was produced a smell of sulfur and it was connected with those waters. And that valley of the angels who had led astray mankind burned beneath that land. And through its valleys proceed streams of fire, where these angels are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. But those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body, but for the punishment of the spirit, now their spirit is full of lust that they may be punished in their body, for they have denied the Lord of spirits and see their punishment daily, and yet believe not in his name. And in proportion, as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever. For before the Lord of spirits, none shall utter an idle word. For the judgment shall come upon them because they believe in the lust of their body, and they deny the spirit of the Lord. And those same waters will undergo a change in those days, for when those angels are punished in these waters, these water springs shall change their temperature. And when the angels ascend, this water of the springs shall change and become cold. And I heard Michael answering and saying, this would be Michael the archangel, this judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth, because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the lust of their body. Therefore, they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever. Now, that's interesting because we're being told that these waters, whatever they may be, are going to be turned into flames and will burn forever. And this is where the sinful and rebellious of mankind will be punished forever. Chapter 68. And after that, my grandfather Enoch gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book, in the parables, which had been given to him. And he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables. And on that day, Michael the archangel answered Raphael and said, the power of the spirit transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets the judgment of the angels. Who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away? And Michael answered again and said to Raphael, Who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out? 
And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits, Michael said thus to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord. For the Lord of Spirits has been angry with them because they do as if they were the Lord. Therefore, all that is hidden shall come upon them forever and ever. For neither angel nor man shall have his portion in it, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. Now, as I said when we began, this seems to be a narration of everything that we have discussed up until this point. And that's interesting because we're halfway through the book of Enoch. So this would be a perfect place to summarize all that we have previously discussed and all that has previously been revealed and said. And so today I just want to end with this that we just read in verse 3 of chapter 68. And it says, knowing all of these things, who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it? If you know that this is what awaits you, how can you not be moved by having such knowledge? And whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out. You see, it would be important for us as mankind to realize that all the things that we think that we are so intelligent about, all the things that we think that we've got figured out, these were things that were taught us by these fallen angels. And just as judgment is going to come upon these fallen angels for teaching us these things, we are going to receive the same judgment because we have heeded to such things. And so if we are aware of this and we truly believe this, we would shun, we would flee and adhere to the things of God, the teachings of God. And so another way of saying this would be that men think that their success, their fame, their fortune, their ingenuity, their entire history is centered around the, the things of this earth. And most wouldn't even give thought to the idea that these are outside forces that are leading us and guiding us, manipulating us, and influencing us in the decisions that we make. But just stop and think for a moment. If man knew that we were being influenced by outside sources, and they truly believed some of these sources are evil, some of these sources are pure and righteous, wouldn't the majority of those that knew these things pursue the righteous and flee from the wicked and evil? And so as we are told in the book of Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And that's exactly what we see taking place at the end of our text today. People perish because they know not the truth. If they knew the truth, they might act and think differently. Well, we're going to end there today, friends. I'm so pleased that you spent a few moments with us today. And I truly hope and pray that your journey is blessed, that you're walking in the Spirit, that your mind is upon the things of God, and that you're seeking to bring the Lord Jesus pleasure in all that you do today. And I truly love you, friends. As Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.